Hi guys and welcome to Better Data Science. In the last video you have seen how easy it is to calculate the elevation difference and distance of a server route in Python. Calculating these was necessary for what we're gonna do today and as gradient estimation. Cyclists love talking about gradients and the term doesn't represent the same thing as in data science. In cycling a gradient is basically the slope of the surface you're riding on. As it turns out, we can estimate them without too much trouble with basic Python and math skills. There's a lot to cover today, so let's dive straight in with library imports and dataset loading. As always, if you find this video useful, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to Better Data Science. It really makes a difference and helps the channel a lot. We'll use the dataset in the CSV format we exported in the previous video. It contains geolocation, elevation and distance data for an exported Strava GPX route file. Before we deal with the dataset, let's first import a couple of libraries. We will need only numpy, pandas and matplotlib. So import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, import matplotlib pyplot as plt, and we'll tweak the params for matplotlib or cparams. So the first one is the figure size. Let's set it to, let's say 16 by six. I'll copy paste this below. This one is X's spines top sub boolean is equals to false and we'll do the same for the right spine okay and now let's load in the data set so raw df equals to pd read csv it's in data raw df with elevation and distance so raw df, let's check the head. So to recap, there are 835 data points in total on this 36.4 kilometer long route. On average, that comes to 43.6 meters be between data points. We can use the elevation difference and distance data to estimate average gradients on each of these 835 segments. Let's see how next. A gradient is nothing but a slope of the surface you're riding on. Our data is quite limited as we only have 835 data points spread over 36 kilometers. We'll do our best, but everything you'll see from this point is just an estimation. We can estimate the average gradient between two data points by dividing the elevation difference between them with the distance covered and multiplying the results by 100. Let's test the logic with hard-coded values from the second data point, which has 1.86 meters of elevation gain over 87.59 meters of distance. So the logic would be 1.86 divided by 87.59 multiplied with 100. So the average gradient from the route start to the second data point was 2.1%. This means that if the same gradient continues, you would gain 2.1 meters of elevation after 100 meters of distance. It's only an average, so keep that in mind. The first 15 meters of the segment could have 10% gradient and the remaining 72 meters could be completely flat. On the other hand, the entire 87 meter segment could have a perfectly distributed 2.1% grade. My point is that we can't know for sure and the above logic is the best we can do. Let's apply it to the entire data set. We'll skip the first row as there's nothing to compare it with. Gradients are usually rounded up to a single dec decimal point, but that's just a convention, not a requirement. Feel free to include more if you wish. So gradients is a list containing mp none for index row in route df it rows basically go over all the rows if index equals to zero don't do anything and in any other case 
calculate the gradient as row elevation difference divided by row distance and multiply the result with a hundred and now gradients append mp round grade to one decimal point and let's check the first 10 and that's basically it with the calculations we can now visualize the calculated gradients to see what we're dealing with so let's say plt plot mp arrange length of gradients and gradients line width let's set it to 2 and let's change the color to 101010 there appears to be something wrong with the route file a single data point has over a 1200% gradient which is impossible in theory that would mean you gain 1200 meters of elevation after 100 meters of distance We'll mitigate this issue by adding a condition. If the estimated average gradient is greater than 30%, we'll append a missing value to the list. There are no gradients above 30% on this route, and thankfully you won't often encounter such steep gradients in, in real life. So let's copy this logic from here. Paste it below. This part is good, we won't change it. This is how we calculate the gradient that doesn't change. And now if grade is greater than 30, gradients append a missing value, else append the gradient itself. Okay. And let's see how it looks like now. It's definitely a step in the right direction, but now we have a couple of missing data points, as you can see here and here. There's a quick way to fix it, and it's called interpolation. Let's cover it next. Before we do anything, let's assign the calculated gradients to a new dataset column. So, row df, let's name it gradient, equals to our list of calculated gradients. Let's check the head. And it's here. We'll now filter the data set and keep only the rows where the gradient is missing. So row df, row df, gradient is NA. We can ignore the first one as it's missing for a whole different reason. We'll have to handle the other two. To get the idea of the approach, let's isolate the second one with the surrounding couple of rows. So this would be something like row df from index 401 to let's say 406. We'll impute the missing values with interpolation method. It will replace the missing value with the average of the data point before and after it. For example, the missing gradient before the missing value was 0 and after it was negative 5.9. The interpolated gradient will be negative 2.95 since 0 minus 5.9 equals to negative 5.9 and negative 5.9 divided by 2 is negative 2.95. It all boils down to calling a single function interpolate and yeah you can see it here it really is a simple but quite effective method we'll now use it to interpolate all missing values in the column and we'll also fill the first missing value with zero so row df gradient equals to row df gradient interpolate fill NAs with zero. Let's check the head. And now it looks like it should. Let's now repeat the visualization just to verify the lines connected. So plt plot 
can be arranged length of the route df and route df gradient line width we'll keep it at two and let's change the color to one zero one zero one zero so everything looks good now which means we were ready to further analyze the gradients we'll leave that for the upcoming video but for now let's just save the data set to a csv file so route df to csv data route df gradient csv we can ditch the index index equals to false and that's all i wanted to cover today let's wrap things up next today we see how to estimate gradients from the route segment which is one of the most important aspects of cycling it gives you insights into what you can expect on the ride and how should you pace yourself you have to admit, the whole thing was much easier to calculate than you expected. Everything boils down to elementary school math anyone can follow. The upcoming video will complicate things slightly, as we'll shift our focus to gradient profiles. We want to know the distance cycled across different gradient ranges, but don't worry about it just yet. In the meantime, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to Better Data Science. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.